I'm asked to calculate the value of x. So how much is x? I'm given two questions. And if I look at the first question and I analyze the situation, yeah, we're talking about a right angle triangle, yeah, where one angle is 90 degrees perpendicular, and x is an angle in that triangle. Now I start thinking about everything I know about calculating angles. Because for instance, in a triangle, the internal angles add up to 180 degrees. So if this one is 90, 180 minus that angle, minus this angle will give me x. However, in this particular scenario, I'm not given that angle over there, so I can't use that strategy to calculate x. But quickly, if this would be the situation, and that's why we always analyze questions properly, and I have to calculate x, I would simply do 180 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 37 degrees, yeah. So x would equal to, if you do that properly, 53 degrees. Yeah, so never forget that you have several strategies to answer a particular question. But back to this situation, yes, they give me 90 degrees, but they don't give me that top corner, so I can't use that property to calculate x. Now, does that make me nervous or frustrated? No, not at all because I have another tool, another strategy to calculate angles in right angle triangles. And indeed, we call that trigonometry. And a quick revision of that, yeah, perhaps you've seen this slide before uh, during a different question. Trigonometry is based upon the principle of similarity, similar triangles, and you have three ratios, the tangents of an angle, the cosine of an angle, and the sine of an angle. Yeah. And the tangent of an angle is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. The cosine of an angle, the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And the sine of an angle is the hypotenuse divided by the, sorry, the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Now that's perhaps confusing or difficult to remember. And that's why I always write down toa ka so at the top of my paper. But perhaps you have learned so ka toa or another order, yeah, you write down what you've learned, I write down toa ka so, because that's going to tell me that the tangents is the opposite divided by the adjacent, the cosine is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, and the sine is the opposite sine divided by the hypotenuse. So before you start solving these questions, you have to name the size of your triangle, yeah? it's crucial, yeah, so you don't want to rush that, you take your time, you have plenty of time. It's better to do things properly than to rush things, okay? Now, the hypotenuse doesn't change. The hypotenuse is that length of the triangle across the 90 degree angle, okay? So that's my hypotenuse. It's also the longer side of a right angle triangle, yeah? But anyway, on the other side, across the 90 degree angle. Then my other two sides are either called the opposite or the adjacent. And that depends on where you are standing in a triangle. Now let me show you what I mean with that. Let's say, let me take green. Let's say I'm standing in this angle. All right. And I always turn the paper. Yeah, you don't have to do that, but it really helps me if I do. All right. Now I'm standing in this corner. Yeah, and I have three sides in a triangle. One, two, three. Now the hypotenuse is the hypotenuse. Yeah, across the 90 degree angle. But which one is my adjacent now? Which one is touching me? What is my neighbor's side? Well, that is this one. This one is my adjacent. And what is my opposite side? Which one is on the other side of the triangle? Yes, that is that one. All right. So I have, if I'm standing here, I have the hypotenuse, my adjacent, and the opposite. But if I would walk in my triangle to that angle, if I would just turn that, so let's say I would be standing over here. Now, what is my adjacent now? Well, two lines are touching me, as always. Yeah, well, that's my hypotenuse. That means that now this side is my adjacent. Yeah, and what is the opposite if I'm in this angle? That is that side of the triangle. Yeah, the hypotenuse doesn't change. The opposite or the adjacent depend where you are at here. This is the adjacent, and that's my opposite. And here, this is the adjacent, and that's my opposite. 
the hypotenuse stays the hypotenuse across the 90 degree angle. All right, that was a quick revision of that. Now let's look at this situation. Yeah, because if we understand the basics, we can do these questions fairly quickly. I'm standing in my angle. I, I can't do uh, the property of 180 degrees minus the other two angles. So I have to use Toa Castle trigonometry. Toa Castle, let me write that down. If I stand my angle, I've got to name my sides first. And I have the adjacent and the hypotenuse. Adjacent and the hypotenuse. Now, which ratio is about the adjacent and the hypotenuse? That is the cosine. Fantastic. So I'm going to write down the cosine of yeah, my angle, which is x now, equals the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So 3 over 5. Now, when you are calculating a length using trigonometry, you have to rearrange that formula to find x. But now, x is my angle. Now, you are lucky then, because this is the question you want because there's nothing really to rearrange. All you have to do is you do the inverse. Now this is gonna look perhaps a little bit difficult, but you will notice it's not. And yeah, that's gonna equal x. So the inverse of the cosine, yeah, three over five equals x. Now, what does that mean? Well, go to your calculator, yeah. And you know the sine, the cosine, and the tangents buttons by now, right? But if you look on top of that, in my case, in orange letters, you see sine to the power of minus one, huh? the inverse of the sine, the cosine to the minus one, the inverse of the cosine, the tangents minus one. So what do I have to do? When I calculate the angle, I decide, well, which ratio? In this case, the cosine, three over five. And to calculate my angle, I do shift cos, yeah? And if you do that yourself at home, you will also see in your screen, Cos, eh? cos cosine to the power of minus one, that's the inverse of three over five. Now make sure you use that calculator properly, equals. And then it will tell you that x equals 53.1301023.5. And when we are calculating an angle, we have to give that to one decimal place. Not three cylindrical figures, but one decimal place. So x, if I write my final answer here, equals 53 points. So one decimal place, it's a one. Does it stay a one or does it go up to a two? It stays a one, eh? 53.1 degrees. All right, don't be one of those students who's gonna say degrees Celsius. Yeah, that's temperature. These are angles, okay, so 53.1 degrees, that's it, fantastic. So that was the first question, now we can do the second question, I'm standing my angle X, yeah, perhaps you want to turn your paper to really physically stand on that angle, you're going to name your sides, it is the opposite and the hypotenuse, Opposite hypotenuse, am I sure? Yes, I'm sure, opposite hypotenuse. Yeah, take your time, which ratio? Opposite hypotenuse, it's the sine. Good, the sine of x equals the opposite 21 divided by the hypotenuse. I'm looking for the angle, so I write down the inverse, yeah, because that's gonna give me my angle. Now I put my pens down and I grab my calculator. Yeah, please don't be one of those students who is doing math with a calculator in one hand and a pen in the other hand, eh? because that's not how it's, eh? you're not gonna be very successful doing it like that. Yeah? You leave your calculator what it is, you write your workings down, yeah? and the second you need your calculator, you put your pen down, you grab your calculator, all right? Make sure it's set to degrees, by the way, otherwise you get wrong answers. I'm looking for the angle, so shift, sign. Make sure you can use your calculator properly. A lot of students can't, and they think it's a blessing that they can use a calculator, but in many cases it's not. Anyway, equals, let me see, it gives me 61.04497, um, sorry, 
97, yeah, 563. A bit confused there, that's why I slowed down to make sure I don't make a mistake. Yeah, but an angle we give to one decimal place, so x equals 61 point. So it's a zero, so it stays a zero, or it goes up to a one, but it's lower than a five, so it stays a zero degrees. Now you have to put that zero there, uh, correct, to one decimal place. Don't think that 61.0 is the same as 61, because in this case it's not. Yeah? 61.0 is more accurate, correct to one decimal place. All right, I have calculated the value of x, uh, which were angles in right angle triangles. I couldn't do 180 degrees minus my other two angles, uh, like you've done in year seven, and year six, and year eight perhaps. Yeah, you've done like this, 180 internal angles at the sum of the internal angles minus 90 minus 37 would give you 53. No, I couldn't use that strategy because they only give me one angle, not the other one. Yeah, so that doesn't make me panic at all because I have more strategies to solve these problems. Yeah, I'm very confident I can use trigonometry, yeah, ratios, right angle triangles, toa castle, the tangents, the cosine and the sine. Now I wish you all the best, I know you can do it, try a few questions, uh, be wrong, learn from your mistakes and you will do it. All the best.